Today I want to talk a little bit about autophagy. Now, what is that? What, what possibly is that? Well, autophagy is a process in your body by which you degrade or break down old cellular material and devour it and move it out of your system. Uh, it's quite amazing. It's a natural process that your body uses to clear out um, damaged parts of your cell and damaged mitochondria. And so that's really the topic I want to cover is damaged mitochondria and how this process of autophagy helps to keep you healthy and how you can actually stimulate it and boost it and get the best out of it. And to do that, you have to do something called intermittent fasting. Now, we all know what fasting is. Fasting is going without food, usually with just water. There's all kinds of fasts. There's juice fasts. There's water fasts. There's fasts that include just eating vegetables or just eating fruit. But an intermittent fast is a type of fast where you go without anything except maybe water for a short period of time to stimulate this process of autophagy. And so to do that, you have to go for a minimum of 12 hours without any food. Now that might seem like a long time, but it's actually really simple. It's a process that I used when I had cancer to peak the effect of my ketogenic diet. So why do I think it's so easy? Because basically if you stop eating at six o'clock at night and you don't eat till six o'clock in the morning, you've now gone 12 hours <laughs> without food. It's not really hard to eat an evening meal uh, go to bed three to four hours later and wake up at six o'clock in the morning without eating any food because you spend most of that time asleep. But the real key to intermittent fasting and kicking this process into gear is extending it beyond that 12 hours. And if you have something like a medical condition like cancer, which is what I had, it's really great if you can extend it to 16 hours. Now, 16 hours may seem really huge to you, too, but I do that all the time. In fact, I'm making this video at about 10 o'clock in the morning, and, and I have not eaten since 6 o'clock last night, and I am not hungry at all. In fact, I feel really clear. I feel really bright. I felt good enough to sit down and do this video. And so, because I'm on a ketogenic diet, though, that diet allows you to have certain fats in your system that help you peak brain function. And so you don't get as hungry on that particular diet. And the other key thing about it is, is that even though you're going like me today, 16 hours, I'm probably going to end up doing 18 hours of a fast today, uh, which is what I did every single day when I had cancer. And then I lessened it and came back because I didn't need to be as strict. But it seems like I still end up always doing 16 because I'm in a habit now of eating dinner around 6. And I don't eat breakfast until 10 o'clock. But that doesn't mean I don't have any calories. That just means the only calories that I have is a little bit of grass-fed butter and a little bit of MCT oil. Now, why does that make a difference? It makes a difference because those two things um, do not stimulate the release of hormones in your body. There's no reaction to it. Uh, the grass-fed butter is really good for your digestion. It actually helps your body to make certain bacteria and, and uh, maintain the lining of your digestion. But MCT oil itself uh, is a type of fat that is real easily transformed into another type of fat called the ketone. In fact, it doesn't require any digestion. And this is why I have it. So my ketone level goes up. Uh, I stay in a state of ketosis because those two fats do not end my fast or stimulate the release of insulin. And this is the big key. You do not stimulate the release of insulin, and there's no change in your blood sugar. And so that's why you're still considered to be fasting, even though you've had some calories from fat. So it peaks my brain function. I feel really good no matter what time I decide to eat. 
I'm not real strict about it these days. I might eat some days at 10 o'clock, 11, 12. Usually by 12, I'm having something because um, I just love to eat and I have to have some food. I'm also thin and I don't need to lose weight. So I make sure that I'll eat by noon at the latest, mainly because I wanna make sure I get at least two full meals and some good snacking in the middle of the afternoon. But I usually tend to go every single day, 16 to 18 hours. Now, for the average person who's not on a ketogenic diet, you can still get benefits from that without actually um, extending it so long. As long as you're done eating that, say, by 7 o'clock at night and you don't have breakfast until 7 in the morning, you're fine. You're going to get your 12 hours. You're going to get started on that process of helping your body clear out old damaged cells. And then if you want to extend it past that, it's up to you. It's a little harder if you're eating a high carbohydrate sugar diet because that in and of itself creates cravings. And when you wake up in the morning, you'll be craving a new carbohydrate. But whether you go on a ketogenic diet or just go on a diet to get rid of your sugar cravings, it'll help you with this process of starting to do intermittent fasting and kicking in this process of autophagy, which clears out your old damaged cells. Again, this is really important, especially if you're on a medical ketosis diet, because cancer is damaged mitochondria. It's the metabolism of your mitochondria, its ability to make energy that becomes damaged when you have cancer. And then that cell now depends on sugar. And so this is why that diet works so well and why the fasting works so well in combination with it to get rid of your cancer because you're literally starving your cancer cell from any nutrition that it could possibly get from sugar, and you're actually triggering the process by which your own body gets rid of it because it's a damaged cell.